Hey there. Today, I'm going to show you how I at least put on my Highland kit. The sequence that I do it. Um, I learned this. I learned from when I first joined a Canadian Highland regiment, and this was reinforced when I was in the night, late 1970s. I was attached to the Queensland Highlanders for a brief period. Um, it's not the only way to do it. It's the way I do it. So, and we'll also be dealing with that question about what you wear under the kilt. So, so I start with my leg dress. And the reason for that is uh, a kilt made out of Dalgleish tartan won't wrinkle. But why, if, if you put your kilt on first and then do your shoes or put your leg, leg dress on first, you're, uh, you're going to wind up with a lap crease right at the beginning. So why do that? So start with the hose. Now these are modern generic machine made hose and as you can see from the length of the thing whoever designed these things seem to think that an awful lot of basketball players or perhaps what you see in maasai warriors wear kilts because the hose are awfully long you notice how i'm gathering it up like this because in the past i was often working with frankly elderly elderly kit like a 50 60 80 year old pair of of hose i mean they're they're beautifully made i still hang on to them but you had to be careful because they were ripe they were old and you could tear them apart so on goes the hose and i hope you can see in the video there's the cabling the lines here i'm making sure you see how this is twisted i'm making sure they're going on straight now again these machine hose are awfully long and I don't know about you, but I find this a damned unsettling mental image. You're welcome. Um, garters. Now, we have these adjustable elastic garters. I no longer uh, use the things. Well, the, this is an old set I'm using, but I no longer provide the things to customers because I lost the source. And frankly, a strip of cloth tape is every bit as good. Is the problem with the elastics, or problem with any anything like this, is if they're tight enough, if they well, if they're too tight, you run the risk of varicose veins along your legs. I mean, there's a whole generation, more than one generation, of high, former Highland soldiers with a pattern of varicose veins around from wearing hose. The modern army doesn't have that problem because they wear their kilts maybe twice a year. You can see what I think about that. Garter knots, I've made like finished garter knots for people these days i just use a short length I, and this is funny because i was inspired i found these short lengths of garter length garter knot material this red tape red woven tape which has been continuously in production since the, at least the early 1730s because the highland regiments were wearing it then and i think it was already common then so these things are lovely and, and frayed as you can see so i just use a short length like that it just pleases me to do so it's a bit cheeky now dealing with this travesty, I fold it the way a soldier folds his sleeves. Um, and to me at least, and for the vast majority of people, the correct distance down, the top of the hose should be the distance from the bottom of the kneecap to the top of the hose is the width of your palm at the base of your fingers. That gives me the right length because it's just beyond the curve of the of the calf providing you've got calves with curves in them fun fact in the 1700s possibly earlier um when it was vitally more important for a man to have an attractive set of legs than a woman given the fashion the women's fashions of the day and that fellows were wearing knee bre tight knee breeches with with long hose and um and buckled shoes you could actually get falsies. Tailors would provide a false calf that you could wear under your hose. <laughs> now you have that mental picture stuck in your head. Yeah, falsies. <coughs> Pardon me. <clears throat> I'm getting all gussied up here because I got a customer coming soon. It's our first encounter. So it's vitally important that I be dressed like a tailor. Okay, there we go. I usually don't bother with the scheme do these I'm wearing these a little bit high right now and you can see my C4 tattoo is poking out which is why the other ranks the jocks always put it there because from a distance it could look like you're wearing a scheme do now with my shoes I uh, I'm quite attached 
to these wooden shoe trees. I really like them because if you've been wearing if you've been wearing your shoes in the wet, and I was out in the rain yesterday, um, we walked a few kilometers out in the rain in these shoes. Putting these things inside, it keeps the shape of the shoe because if they're if they're wet, they can shrink. And also it, by keeping the, the tight the, the leather tight like this, it's the easiest way. It, it really helps, I should say, when you're polishing the leather, which I do not because I, I'm not, uh, I'm not in the army anymore. I'm not going to be standing inspection. I don't particularly care about shiny shoes, but the leather benefits from the Kiwi shoe polish. Now, some people use a, uh, a shoe, uh, a shoe guide, whatever they call it, shoehorn. Brown, not black. Black is for funerals. I like these. I'll, uh, Maybe I'll post it. If I remember, I'll post the, the link to where I bought these things. Locks, Lokes, however they're pronounced. I really, really like them because they come in widths. And I should add, and this is something I've laughed at in the past, is when a uh, time without number in the barracks and just by myself, I've seen somebody, and I've done this myself, where you're going, shoes, hose, garden knots, killed. Sporin, kilt, yeah, I already said that, waistcoat, shirt, tie, coat. Just make sure it's all here before I start, because otherwise I'd be running around the house looking for that other thing. Tailor-made shirt. I really like these. They're not particularly expensive, but they fit. The sleeve isn't too long. The, the length of the shirt, I, frankly, I would get the shirt maybe next time I have some shirts made. I might get them just palms with longer because um, just worn under a kilt it, it adds a little bit to the to the comfort and this of course leads to the great question of what do you wear under a kilt the short answer the correct answer really is it's entirely your decision it's uh yeah it's your bloody choice now, having said that i grew up in the army culture <laughs> where after a parade up in the junior ranks mess, the other ranks mess, they would have a custom called the short arms inspection. They'd all line up one, two, three, one. And if anybody was caught wearing something under his kilt, they would basically dogpile him, tear the offending garment off, hang it from one of the mounted, it was a moose head mounted in the, in the mess. And that fellow wasn't allowed back in the mess until they'd fallen off. So you'd get guys trying to bribe friends to go in and pull the thing off. It was a real like pull a take the underwear off so that you could be readmitted to the mess um yeah it was a real barometer of how 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 friend how how friend how closely your friends your friendship was so yeah shirt bucked, buttoned up top done up i put the i put my um i put my tie on at this stage because it just seems easier to do it now and i just do a single windsor what the hell am i doing that backwards i am doing it backwards and this is a uh, this is a really nice silk tie that a friend gave me, so I'm taking good care of it. As you can see, I I don't think I need to post a video on how to tie a tie. I mean, there's many people out there to show you, and there's many many different ways to tie a tie. It's pretty cool, an archaic garment that they are. Okay, here we are. Pull the collar down. So yeah, back to the whole thing about what do you wear under your kilt. <coughs> <It's, clears throat> I'm not sure what annoys me more. The fact that some complete stranger is going to walk up and ask such an astonishingly personal question. Or the fact that nobody asks me anymore since my hair went gray. Yeah, it's, uh, I'll leave that for the philosophers. Um, but it isn't, the, it, it isn't that kilt wears suddenly decided to stop wearing underwear. It's that the rest of the world started wearing underwear. If you look at pictures of portraits from anybody from, well, some, some clothing historian will immediately take me to task for this, but I'm going to say the Victorian era. Just about everybody you see in those paintings is, well, they're going, I'm going to say regimental. I've heard the phrase going commando, and I don't know where that came from. Um, I've known commandos, and it never really came up in conversation, frankly. So, yes, yeah, an entirely personal question. The problem is, though, is that whether you're wearing 
tidy whities or Y fronts or boy shorts or whatever you want to call them, when it's time to do your business, shall we say, um, if, if, if you're going to pull your underwear up afterwards, you're going to pretty much have to take your kilt off to get your underwear properly back up because otherwise it's going to be riding half up and it's going to drive you mad. So entirely personal observation. The second thing too is that this is eight yards of wool. Now I'm putting the kilt on so it's up to my natural waist. Now I, over the last few years, have become a bit of a chubby monkey, a chunky monkey. So I, I found myself having to do this. I'm doing the buckle, bringing around the buckle to the front here, or just off center. I'm doing it up. It's somewhat lacking in uh, flexibility there. Remind me to tell you about my free beer for life gig that I had going on for quite some time. So one buckle on, sorry, the other buckle toes up. I'm going to back up a bit because I forgot to show you something. <laughs> it's not that. <laughs> is that a mistake that everybody makes is they put the strap through the buckle, buck the buttonhole, I should say, and they use it to pull the kilt tight. Everybody, even the skinny minis, use your kilt. They use our kilt. We all use our kilts like a corset to pull our guts into place. But if you do this, this is going to tear. We put it through the buckle. We suck in as hard as we can. Again, hard as I can. Is that as hard as I can? Can okay. It's a funny thing about. I mean, this kilt I've put on a couple of inches over the last few years, and part of that is just anno domine. That's my. That's the years have passed. I'm going to be a fun fact. I'm going to be a senior citizen this year. Sixty-five. Jesus. Kind of surprised to be alive, actually. Um, yeah, part of it was the, part of it's just age. Part of it is, as I said, that free beer for life gig I had going for a while. Okay, there we are. So it's in place and if it's, and you can see the amount of, um, adjustment we have without any, doing any tailoring at all. That's plus or minus close to three inches just with these straps. So I try to look in the mirror. Now it just so happens that my kilt is straight. That's the center of my kilt. But my shirt placket has rocketed off over there. So we reach up under the kilt. We make damn sure that it is, in fact, the shirt tail that we're pulling on. Nothing else. Your shirt's it's not too bad across the back. But if, if your shirt was blousing out a lot, you can pull it down at the back, too. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> sporin. This is my preferred way to store the sporin. I keep, I roll, I take off the strap, I roll it up, I, I put it inside because if you hang the strap, if you hang the sporn from the strap from a hook, the leather is going to eventually make some of the shape, assume the shape. If you've got a leather um, sleeve on the back there, it's going to assume the shape over time too. So that when you put the kilt on, sorry, when you put your sporn on, it's going to kind of stick out a little bit. It's not a good look. So on goes the strap. And just because I've had the sporn strap for almost 50 years, 40 odd years, almost 50, that, I, <laughs> that the preferred hole is slightly elongated and I can feel it in the position rather than looking. Now, ideally, when you're wearing the kilt, when you're wearing the sporn, the top of the sporn comes to where even on the leanest, on even on the leanest of us, our belly goes in over the slightly. You can see where my belly goes in. Sporn sits there. If it's higher, it looks goofy. If it's lower, it pushes in on the cloth, which isn't a good look. And we also don't overload the sporn. I don't put anything more than a cell phone in it or a very stripped down wallet like a card case. So there we are. On goes the waistcoat. Spelt waistcoat, but pronounced waistcoat. That was a bit of a bad way to put it on. I could have stirred, I could have uh, strained the seam when I did that. Now I wear this. You see this metal ribbon in my buttonhole. Um, that is the queen's. 
what Jubilee was it? The, the, the framed thing is hanging right here. The uh, Diamond Jubilee medal. Um, nine, what year was that? 2012, yeah. <clears throat> I got this. Now, it's, it's a bit of a giveaway in some branches of the service. But in my in the regiment I was serving with at the time, the award procedure was essentially the same. In fact, they said so, the, essentially the same as, as for the MBE, the member of the Order of the British Empire. So it was, they, they submitted a list of people to be, put, to be considered for these very few medals that were going to be issued. What makes it special to me <clears throat> is I didn't make the cut, but another soldier stepped back and said, I'm not taking that medal. I will not accept it. Give it to McDonald. And that catapults the medal to me to being a very, very special, a very big deal indeed. I don't know who, who, who that soldier was. I have a damn good idea, but I'm not going to ask because if I don't know, I'm grateful to all of them. If I knew, sure, I'd be grateful to that one guy, but right now I'd, I'd rather not know and, and be, again, be grateful to all of them. So take a look at the kilt coat. Now, you'll notice how I put it on. I, I didn't put it on over my shoulders and bring it down because that can strain the seams. So there we go. I got my boutonnier from my, the order I received some years ago. My um, pocket square, which uh, prefer, prefer to have a white one. I should lay in some pocket squares. Okay, how do we look? Good. Yeah, again, I don't often um, have a, a skiing do. I, I have a couple of skiing do's, but I rarely wear them. I can't say why. I don't know. Personal taste. Anyhow, there we go. Uh, perhaps a little bit later, I'll I'll do this again. <laughs> oh God, McDonald taking off his clothes in the internet. There's something I don't want to think about that.